Hello! Welcome to the first episode of the Simply Josephine video podcast. My name is Dacia and I am a maker and this is where I want to share what I do with all of you. I'm a soap maker, a salve maker, an herbalist. I also sew things, all sorts of things, mainly aprons and skirts, stuff like that. I recently became very fascinated with natural dyeing, and a huge part of this podcast will be about natural dyeing. I want to cover that, my exper experiments with natural dyeing, things that work, things that don't, and then moving on to sewn items, different items that uh, patterns that I found that worked or didn't work or that I've altered. And then I will also share herbal things and finally what's going on with the family will be at the end of the podcast. The first thing I would like to discuss is natural dyeing, botanical dyeing. I recently experimented with cochineal, and that's what I would like to talk about first. I found a fabulous blog post by Botanical Colors on how to prepare your cochineal dye bath, and I highly, highly recommend that post, checking it out if you haven't already. Cochineal provides a beautiful color, a beautiful, vibrant pink. I made this yoga skirt. I dyed this fabric. This is a cotton hemp jersey knit, so it's stretchy. Anyway, it's been dyed with cochineal. So the first thing that you do in natural dyeing is scouring. And scouring is cleaning your fabric, basically. I like to scour in washing soda, uh, soda ash, basically. Scour, and then the next step you do is mordanting. And it's very important to mordant because that allows the dye to bind to the fabric. A lot of people use alum, and that's what I have been using recently. I've been using alum potassium aluminum sulfate, and I ordered this either from Botanical Colors or Dharma Trading. There's several places this can be purchased. After you've mordanted, you can then move on to the dye bath. So this one was the cochineal. And I also did some experimenting with logwood. This was a logwood, a logwood extract that I ordered from Botanical Colors. And the same process, again, this is also the cotton jersey knit. I also dyed regular cotton for bags and aprons and things as well. But this is the same process, scour mordant dye bath. Anyway, I thought I would share, share that. And a great book that I have found is The Modern Natural Dyer. Excellent, excellent book. It is by a Christine with a K, and then her last name is V-E-J-A-R. Great book. Full of information and a step-by-step -step mordantine process. That's where I was a little fuzzy, was the mordantine. And if you are at all interested in that, this is a great book to get. 
Another wonderful thing that I came across to use while dyeing are um, these resist blocks. I ordered these from Ninja T Chickens, Ninja Chickens Etsy shop, and oh, they are so cool. So I think they're made out of plexiglass. You just put your fabric in between there, and then I clamped these down with these plastic clamps to hold it on the fabric and then put it into the dye bath. Anyway, these are the moon phases. Very fabulous. And this is how they turned out on this t-shirt. This was all experimenting. I'm not even sure if I even mordanted this t-shirt, but um, that's how those resist blocks look on the cotton. I love it, love it, love it, love it, and am excited to exper experiment further with it. The next thing is what's on the sewing table. Lots of things are on my sewing table this time of year. We are full on into winter and I have been sewing like crazy so that my stash will be full for market season and then in the springtime when the plants come burst on the scene I'll be able to spend some time with the plants. So what is on the sewing table? I have been working on these. They're so fun. These little girl skirts. And I have been making them in small, medium, and large, just with the standard size chart you can Google online. This skirt is, has a cotton fabric bottom and then a jersey knit waistband yoga top fold over so they can wear it you know, wherever they like, up higher or down lower. I like to wear my yoga skirts more on my hips. This pattern is a free online pattern from Sew Mama Sew Yoga Skirt. I'm sure if you just Google Sew Mama Sew Yoga Skirt, I'm sure it will come up. It's the same pattern I used for the the dyed, the plant-based dyed adult skirts as well. It's very, very easy to figure out and use and make in all sizes. So that's what I've been up to. Skirts, skirts, skirts. Having a lot of fun with them, especially these little girl ones, like this fabric especially. Look at how cute. That is with the foxes. I love it. Adorable. I saw something on Instagram and was so inspired to experiment with patchwork. Patchwork is so fun, so easy, and a great way to use up your old scraps you have lying around. So I made myself a vending half apron out of all the leftover pieces of fabric. And then this is a pocket here on the end. Anyway, it was really fun to create something for myself. I uh, lined the back side with just some extra fabric I had. It was a lot of fun creating this. I recently purchased this book, Natural Color. I just got it so I haven't had a chance to really dive in and check it out, but I will and I'll report back on this book in the next episode. Wintering Montana is what we have been doing. 
I've had a nice time skiing, skiing with my girlfriends, getting outside. It's been very cold though. It's been in the single digits and down around zero at night. All of this chill has me inspired for spring. I ordered some seeds and they came in the mail the other day. I'm very, very excited about that. They are from Floret, Floret Farm or Floret Flower. Anyway, they have such a beautiful Instagram feed and I ordered several seeds, but I'm super excited about these dark, dark red sunflowers. Sweet peas, sweet peas. I love sweet peas. One of my faves, along with some zinnia. And of course, nasturtiums. Nasturtiums remind me of my grandmother's house. She had nasturtiums growing all over the place and I remember eating them and being so excited that, oh my gosh, you can eat flowers, <laughs> you know? So I have to grow nasturtiums every year so we can eat them and it can remind me of Grandma May. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Thanks for stopping by. And please leave a comment if there's something you'd like to discuss further with me. Also, subscribe and like and visit me over at simplyjosephine.com. I have a blog and you can subscribe there. And I also offer several different sewn items along with herbal preparations. And I look forward to connecting with you. Have a great day. Bye.